Hello everyone, Berserker here and welcome to episode 3 of my campaign for Total War Attila as the fix. Um, now, I, I've had a really hard time recording this because um, I've tried to record this episode twice now and both times like halfway through the video, um, Shadowplay just bugs out and stops recording the audio uh, for some reason. I don't know why the audio just disappears. Hopefully it's not gonna do it a third time because I've been trying to record it for one hour now. All the footage just went right down the drain. So I just uh, I just uh, reloaded the old safe and uh, I'm gonna do the, the same things. Um, also, I apologize if you hear the kneeling in the background. My, my neighbors are just driving me crazy. They literally woke me up this morning trying to, uh, uh, you know, like drilling and nailing and whatnot. So it, it's crazy. I'm, I'm getting kind of pissed off, but guess I gotta concentrate on that. I think this is the last event of the cycle of the Olamri, um, so let's read it. As promised, the three sons of Tyrion returned bearing a bloody pigskin. However, they have paid a heavy price. All three bear mortal wounds. They claim that the skin has potential healing powers and beg the reed to bind their wounds in it. In return, they promise to provide the answer to any question under the sun. Uh, okay, so... Both times when I tried to record this episode earlier, the first time I tried this one, the second time I tried this one. Uh, this one gives me a governor, this one gives me a general, I need a governor, so let's go for this one. Uh, this is kind of cheating, but it's fine. At this point, I don't really care. Like, uh, it's, you know, two 30 minute episodes that just went basically the, down the drain because Shadowplay bugging out. Anyways, let me not talk about that. Basically, what's my plan now? Let's end the turn. I can't really do anything else right now. So, yeah. I want to take the settlement out. Uh, probably the Abdanius are going to siege it because that's what happened earlier when I recorded. Um, but basically, I want to take out the settlement. want go to go to war with the Romans. Um, this settlement looks pretty good. Uh, sieging it is going to be kind of hard, but I'm just going to rely on the fact that um, uh, the walls, like, uh, the walls are going to, you know, start collapsing a little bit. Uh, gonna rely on that um, What I know about the Romans and from personal experience is that Roman towers are really really powerful So I'm gonna try and damage the settlement by sieging as much as possible No one is sieging it actually right now But that's not a good time to attack because it's the winter and I'm gonna suffer some attrition if I go for it right now So yeah, I'm not really gonna do anything uh, I can seek a wife for my heir because uh, Yeah I actually might assign him as a as a governor of this province of this province once I capture it instead of uh, Olamri because he's gonna have some influences my heir so I guess I'm gonna do that I'm gonna try and seek a wife as well um, can assign this guy as a companion as well he's not gonna be gaining any influence because he's just uh, here but at one point I guess I'll go and uh, try and raid with him so yeah. I'm not gonna move at all because uh, I'm gonna suffer cold attrition. I'm just gonna keep replenishing. These are gonna be a few quick turns. Um, nothing really much that I can do. So, yeah. Uh, I'll have to. Oh, okay. They're the Abdania sieging the settlement. As you can see, now it's under siege. So, basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rely that uh, they're gonna keep sieging it. Uh, they're gonna do some damage to the walls and to the settlement. Um, basically there are two scenarios either they, they they fail the siege and they abandon the siege so they go back and I uh, and I can conquer the settlement or if they actually conquer the settlement I'm gonna have to go to war with the Abdanians because I want to have the settlement um, it's uh, it's a provincial capital it's got walls it's got a lot of potential so yeah I guess I'll do it um, Pretty good wife, plus two influence per turn, religious influence as well. When governing, he's gonna give me, um, oh, political obstruction. Let's decree it. And uh, yeah, I got the Olamri character. But anyways, as you can see, religion here is going down. So once I actually govern the province, this religious influence is gonna be really, really good uh, for this guy because hopefully the. Um, uh, religion can go up. Actually, I want to change the edict in this province as well because I want to get some extra growth so I can build a wealth here because as you can see there is um, um, a lot of squalor and I want to keep upgrading my industrial buildings. Speaking of that, I don't have an access to this so I'm going to research uh, the, this technology. Also, I'm going to um, I'm going to finish 
gonna finish this civil one here this gear so they're still changing it i just want to go down check out what's going on with the siege walls are at 95 percent so maybe a couple of more turns uh public order yeah uh keeping this army here is going to be good for my public order uh not really gonna build anything at this point i don't need more food um i guess next turn i'm gonna upgrade the settlement here minus 15 food consumption it's not gonna be the end of the world so yeah it's fine um i haven't encountered many factions yet so i can't do any diplomacy either cannot trade with uh, anyone besides the western roman empire which uh, i'm not gonna do since i'm gonna go to war with them um i gotta conquer this settlement here which has a port before i can actually trade with the abdanians Although I'm pretty sure they're going to accept a trade agreement. I have some uh, wood as a resource here as well. So, yeah. Hopefully, the Abdanians are going to stay there sieging a couple of more turns. And, uh, plus one loyalty. Good. Uh, still sieging. Want to check out the walls. They're at 90%. Um... Oh wow, really? I went too far. That's kind of a mistake. That's fine. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I want the walls to be ideally at about 70% so that most of the towers um, will have collapsed. Because once again, Roman towers are really uh, overpowered at this point. Which, which is not a bad thing. I, I like towers. Uh, and barricades they're actually a great oh, i should have upgraded my settlement it's fine i'm gonna do it next turn um like barricades and uh towers and siege battles are actually a really nice addition to total war tiller because they add a lot more um uh, complexity to the siege battles uh especially the barricades like when they added them at first before the first patch they were basically useless because uh um the attacker was just able to destroy them in like two seconds so they didn't really do much but then they um kind of buffed them so now barricades are pretty much perfect uh you can slow down your opponent a lot if you use them correctly you can put some uh, skirmishers on top of them so you can inflict a lot of casualties um and towers i really like towers because they give you a lot of like they give you a good advantage over um over your your opponent when you're defending which should be the case in siege battles um Let's upgrade this, and, uh, yeah, I just want to get more growth. I need five before I can build a well. Um, can't really do anything about the religion either. Uh, it's too early for any sort of agents. So, yeah, I'm going to wait for one more turn. Let's just check the settlement. want to see what's going on with the gates. 84% they have four units as a garrison they have a catapult as well or an onager rather so yeah anything that I can do here this guy's married hopefully he can uh, he can have some children now this guy let's actually check out his uh, his skills yeah he is a governor as you can see um, Govern province buffs here. Minus two public order. That's not great, but once you level them up, it's gonna be alright. Um, once again, I want my son to be a governor because he's gonna need the influence for it. I spent pretty much all of his influence trying to uh, find a suitable wife for him. I'm powerful at this point, uh, which I don't like. I should go to respectable. That's where I usually try and keep my uh, my power in the campaign. Although it's really hard to manage because. The politics system is kind of confusing. Um, it, it's going to be worked on. I don't like the whole politics system. It's nice that there is a politics system in the game. I really love the whole like aspect of managing the family and stuff like that. But there are just a lot of things when it comes to politics that should be improved. Um, you know, it's nice that you have political actions and stuff like that. Just the way they work should be different. Also, another thing that's kind of... It's a little detail. It's not really a big deal. But uh, they should make, like, um, portraits, like, um, look different for people when they, when they like, age. Uh, they should do, like, in Crusader Kings. In Crusader Kings, you basically have uh, 
one portrait before 16 from 16 to like 35 you have a different portrait which is like the young adult uh, then then you have other you know the middle-aged man and then you have the old man and here it could be it could be 72 you're still gonna have the same portrait so you know it's um, they should make a like in Crusader Kings where you know the portrait changed based on the person's age uh, it's the winter so I don't want to move at this point uh, they're still sieging uh, I'm not gonna move to check out because I'm gonna suffer some attrition uh, if they keep sieging here, which I doubt is gonna happen, but if they keep sieging, I'm just gonna go south and go for the other Roman settlements. Um, oh, forgot about technology. Let's go for this one. I haven't researched anything in military. Uh, so yeah, like, this guy, you know, is like the faction leader at the start of the campaign, so, you know, he looks old. But, you know, this guy is 24, 32, it looks kind of, you know... You know, you just gotta change the portraits based on uh, the character's age, like in Crusader Kings. I think they uh, they did that pretty well. I'm I'm almost convinced they're gonna add it at one point. Hopefully not as a DLC. I doubt they're gonna do it as a DLC, but you never doubt Sega and their DLC practices. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, although yeah, it's uh it's good that you have a politic system. It's just gotta be different. Um, it, it's still it just get gets hard to manage at one point it's pretty much impossible to manage uh, in my Caledonians campaign which is uh, pretty advanced I've been playing a lot of the Caledonians it's it's I have a pretty big empire so it's really hard to like manage the family um, this guy wants to marry this girl uh, he is uh, my is this the my adopted son I think he is yeah, let's give them a blessing. I definitely want them to, to have wives, so... I'm gonna lose some control. I like to have control at about 60%. Um, because based on your control, that's like... Um, the percent of your control determines the percent of all of your political actions. So if it's slow, it gets kind of annoying. Because like you want to send someone as a companion and they fail. So you gotta uh, spend influence to do it. So that's not good. They actually keep sieging here. That's, that's interesting. Uh, when I tried to record the episode earlier, they didn't actually do it. They just broke the siege uh, pretty much at the same point. Um, well, I don't want to reinforce them because that might make them push and actually attack the settlement. I'm just going to stay here and maybe raid a little bit. There you go. That's going to give me some money, which I don't really need at this point. Like, my income's pretty low, so basically, like, practically I need money, but I have nothing to build before I actually build a well. So, I don't really have anything that I can spend my money on. I don't want to recruit more troops because that's going to that's gonna make my um, income uh, even lower, my income per turn. So, definitely do, definitely do not want to do that. Uh, and they keep sieging. Uh, that's fairly interesting. They might actually go for it this time. I mean, they have the troops for it. Um, I don't know if they have any siege equipment. But I'm definitely not going to reinforce them. Because uh, I'm going to have to to help them. And I don't want to help them. Because they're going to get the settlement that I desire. Angles and the Jews are at war. Uh, which is good because they're not going to be Jews over here. Because they might actually attack you pretty early on. Not attack, but at least like come here to like raid and stuff and cause you a bunch of problems. All the Nordic factions. Uh, might as well go for this settlement here. I mean, if these guys keep sieging. Oh, they're already already here. Oh, and they're sieging this settlement as well. Like really, really guys. Oh well, well, guess I'm going for this one then. Can't keep raiding. Oh wow, that, that's really weird. The other thing that's weird as well is that they have the bigger army for the smaller settlement. Like, the settlement is much harder like conquer. Uh, but they have like the smaller army here. Uh, I, I don't like this. If they actually take these settlements, I'll have to go to war with them. And at this point, I'm like the uh, less powerful faction compared to the Abdanians, so it, things might get a little bit messy 
again when I recorded the episode earlier uh, things went very very differently I just went in for the settlement and I just conquered it uh, but now I guess uh, guess I might have to fight the the, the Abdanians which uh, again I don't want to do I want them as military allies uh, in my Caledonian campaign that I'm playing I actually uh, have the Picts and the Abdanians as my military allies and I help them with their campaigns they help me a little bit as well um, they hold like um, parts of um, Iberia so it's actually really useful to have uh, military allies they're more responsive than they were in the previous Total War titles same goes for like puppet states they actually try and help you every now and then so yeah bar finally respectable uh, which is good but it's also not good because it means that I'm losing influence as well um, someone ranked up who ranked up uh, let's let's see Sega Vax that's my uh, that's this guy right no it's not oh it's this guy yeah it's the same guy I just saw he was like leading my armies okay um, can I level him up or something there you go two points uh, that's not very useful that's useful though uh, let's give him what should I give him authority oh yeah definitely needs that and now I guess I'm just going for this settlement over here I just scaled the area yeah nothing here should be easy of course declaring war on the Romans and I can use a night attack okay I, I actually try to like uh, look it up online and see what night attacks actually how they benefit you but I couldn't find anything so I'm just gonna use night battles because of the morale bonus I don't know like I, I got pretty mixed uh, mixed opinions I, I checked out a few forums but um, a lot of people said different stuff about night battles so I don't know if there was any real benefit to them I guess they gotta look cool but um, it's nice that I have some uh, morale bonus in night battles so I'm probably gonna use them but yeah there might be some disadvantages to night battles as well so not gonna use it too much uh, I don't I don't see myself losing this battle either way so um, yeah should be easy to win I have a pretty good um, pretty good range advantage uh, have the have a solid melee advantage as well and cavalry advantage so everything should go my way um, it's a port city so finally I'm gonna be able to get some money so that's good uh, they don't really have a like a real general uh, yeah the, it, it's not a provincial capital so they're not gonna have a general like the governor of the capital is usually in the um, they get like the, the governor of the province is usually in, in the capital so they have a garrison fleet which should be a probably a and at this point uh, the audio disappeared again so I just decided to record the audio separately I'm not commentating this live but I'm doing it after I actually recorded the video because I cannot be bothered recording the same thing again I don't know what causes this bug but uh, apparently when I start a real-time battle the audio just disappears uh, so I guess I'll just do it like that in this episode so basically um, this is a night battle that I decided uh, to play just to try it out take it take advantage of the uh, morale bonus and as you can see they have two towers uh, I'm gonna engage um, you're gonna see I'm gonna spread my army in two parts so I'm gonna engage from two sides this is one of the sides I'm gonna take out this tower and, and of course the one that's like uh, next to it as well so I'm gonna deploy um, I'm gonna deploy like since I have two types of like uh, units that are raiders which are my Celtic skirmishers and also my cavalry that are raiders so I want to deploy them on on the like on each tower uh, so they can capture it as uh, quickly as possible because raider units actually capture towers much more effectively um, so on this side I'm gonna put my general uh, my um, spearmen as well and it, this is the side where uh, I decided to put my uh, skirmishers my Celtic skirmishers so hopefully I'm gonna be able to 
uh, take care of the tower. So I'm going to put my general behind and one more swordsman unit as well just to balance the power a little bit. And on this side, I'm going to put uh, one swordsman unit. I'm going to put uh, two of the X-men units, my warhounds, my archers, and my cavalry. So I'm spreading my army a little bit. Once again, I want to put the cavalry there. So if need be, I'm going to be able to take care of the tower as soon as possible. Going in loose formation and trying to advance with my skirmishers now just to try and uh, uh, get rid of the tower. As you can see, they're starting early on there. Uh, my units are taking damage. Now I'm going to... Uh, try and shoot those swordsmen. As you can see, they're kind of going towards my cavalry here. So I'm going to try and bait them and uh, try and get some shots from behind. Um, not doing a lot of damage early on my archers, but um, as soon as they turn around, they should be able to inflict quite a few casualties. Uh, so yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, here I'm, I'm advancing. They kind of abandoned this tower, so I'm just going to go and capture it on this side. They, uh, they, they had like one naval unit, so I guess they're trying to disembark. Um, so I'm just going to take full advantage of that and just get rid of the tower. I kind of misclicked here. I, I was going to charge, but I decided not to do it. And I just decided to like keep shooting those units from behind. As you can see, they started taking some casualties. Now they have archers as well. Um, and this is actually the moment when I realized that they have, that they had archers and that, that they can actually do some damage to me. So yeah, this unit is getting very depleted now. Uh, it's going to go down relatively soon. The archers, I don't know what they're doing with their archers right now, but they're not using them very effectively. They, uh, Sure, I mean, they inflicted a couple of casualties here and there on me, but it's really not a big deal. Um, and now I think they're charging kind of my melee units with their archers. On this side, I'm trying to deploy my troops. Uh, unit pathing is a little bit buggy. Like, yeah, there you go. They're charging with my, uh, they're trying to charge my X-Men with their archers, which is kind of a mistake. Uh, they got a good cavalry charge, though, on my swordsman. So, uh, yeah, this cavalry unit can win. So I'm, I think I'm going to send my Warhounds there to try and reinforce since Warhounds are, like, really good um, against cavalry. They have a bonus against cavalry. There you go. There are my Warhounds. So you can see I'm overwhelming the archers as well. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that should be an easy battle. There you go. My uh, little bit of a close-up here. Uh, still not taking care of the tower, but it's going to happen soon enough. Now I'm just charging with the rest of my infantry to take care of the cavalry and hopefully if I can I'm gonna take care of the of the tower gonna capture it with my cavalry since that's the raider unit they try and sneak a unit behind me here but of course um, as you can see I react to that they're not gonna get a charge on my um, skirmishers I try and get a quick volley on them but the units are kind of slow so um, they decided to just run instead of throwing javelins so uh, I decide against it and uh, a thing that I wanted to say is that, like, deploying units in the streets of, like, small cities is kind of buggy. I don't know why. Like, I haven't experienced this before. But, like, when I started playing this uh, this campaign, kind of, like, even when I started, like, um, recording the episodes earlier, I encountered a lot of problems when it comes to deploying uh, some of my troops in the settlements. Um, it's just buggy. I, I guess they'll fix that. But it's kind of annoying. As you can see, like, look at how chaotic my units are deployed. Um, so instead of, like, deploying and trying to hold the choke point here, I'm going to actually have to go behind behind it uh, because I just simply cannot deploy my units there in this, you know, tight spot there. So I guess they got to work on that a little bit. Um, and the rest of their cavalry is just going to charge me and not inflict a lot of casualties. They should be able to route pretty soon. Trying to get some volleys on those guys. Uh, they have pretty good block missile uh, chance, so I doubt they're going to do that. And at this point, I, I I thought that was actually their only unit left. I completely forgot that they actually had um, a naval unit, so I'm just going to charge with everything I can. Of course, without the skirmishers, I don't want to do any, any friendly damage, but all the infantry that I have, I'm just going to throw at them. Um, I don't want to really bother with uh, outflanking at this point because it's just too far away. Um, you know, the city is kind of built in such a way to not allow me to, you know, outflank them. If I, if I want to outflank them, I'll have to go through another tower, which I don't want to do. Since I think I'm going to lose more troops if I actually have to um, go close to a tower. Um, instead of, you know, as you can see, I'm, I'm going to take care of these units pretty, pretty easily. So it shouldn't be a problem. 
Uh, and at this point, I think that should end the battle, and I spot these swordsmen here. They have two more swordsmen units that I completely forgot about. I, I don't think that's actually their, um, their, their naval units. They just said those uh, swordsmen unit left. I think they were in the in the town center. But um, I'll take it. I mean, they're going to charge me, so I'm just, once again, regrouping here. Another best formation, as you can see, that, you know, I cannot deploy the units exactly uh, as I can, uh, as I want, rather because it, it just won't let me see see how like i want to deploy my units in a straight line but i guess because of the terrain it just bugs out um i don't know why that happens i really haven't had, a, had problems with that in the past but um i guess it happens so here are not a lot of casualties inflicted but still some good volleys with my archers these are exploratories uh, not a great swordsman unit so uh, now at this point i'm just gonna charge just how to keep my general out of it. Um, of course, my skirmishers, not gonna shoot. And just gonna charge with the rest of my infantry. So I can route those guys as soon as possible. They're going down really, really easily. So uh, somewhere at this point, I just decided to like get quick close-ups. Uh, their general's coming back in the battle. Um, their general unit. And yeah, this is the close-ups. We're gonna see a pretty cool decapitation pretty soon. Uh, which was kind of lucky because in Total War Attila, it's kind of rare to actually see decapitations. There you go. There there it is. So it's, it's kind of rare to see that, so I was kind of lucky. Actually, when I was trying to get footage for my Should You Buy It for the Blood and Burning DLC, it was, um, I, I couldn't actually find a decapitation animation. I guess they're a little bit more rare um, than in Rome 2, uh, which, which is not necessarily bad. So yeah, this is pretty much how the battle ends here. Uh, I'm just finishing all those troops. These guys once again came back, but they should route pretty soon. There's the building burning. Uh, looks pretty awesome. Um, I saw these guys routing, so I wanted to like kill them. So I'm selecting my skirmishers here to like throw some javelins at them. But they're gonna go back. I'm just gonna get one volley on them. I don't know if I even killed anyone no the not that it really matters it just looked kind of cool as you can see here so yeah that's pretty much how the battle is gonna finish there you go these guys are routing i decided to not chase them because once again i have some raider units and they're gonna cause a bunch of damage to the, to the settlement uh which is gonna end up in me having to spend money to repair it which i definitely don't want to do um Actually, I think at this point I talked about raiding with the uh, with the Celtic factions. It's actually pretty cool because like later on, uh, having those raider units is pretty useful because you go to like sack settlements and you actually if you play as the Abdanians, you have that from the start of the campaign. But as the other two factions, the Picts and the Caledonians, you can actually unlock a, a technology that um, gives you more income the more damage you do to a city, which is pretty cool. But that's uh, much later on. Uh, I'm gonna do some some uh, sacking and raiding with the picks as well uh, at one point, but at this point it's too early. I just need to build some income. At this point, I have um, I have port. Uh, I ha I'm gonna have a port now that I conquered the settlement. Um, uh, it, it will just require like a few turns so I can uh, convert everything because it's a Roman settlement. I uh, didn't when it comes to this battle, didn't suffer that many casualties. Just 300. Uh, once again, most of them came from the towers. Uh, the cavalry was able to get a pretty good charge on uh, one of the swordsman units, but then I had the warhounds dealing with the whole situation. As you can see, 42 kills on them. Uh, most of them were on the cavalry unit, so that was pretty cool. I actually like, uh, I like the whole, uh, I like using warhounds uh, and getting close-ups and watching it. Looks pretty cool. Uh, couldn't utilize my cavalry that well, but can't really do it in in a battle like that, I guess. Um, this particular settlement just wasn't uh, built for it. There is a decapitation. Looks kind of buggy. Because uh, like, it kind of looks like a sword. But you chop the guy's head as well. So it kind of looks weird. Um, but it's fine. Um, so I can liberate here Britain. Uh, this faction. Obviously I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to occupy it. I didn't know I had this mission. But apparently I had a mission to be at war with the Western Roman Empire. So it succeeded. It's going to give me... Uh, Celtic pagan support which I think is gonna give me public order um, from the presence of Celtic paganism which is pretty cool 
And that's pretty much the end of the uh, of the episode. Here I just decided to like repair the buildings, which is gonna take me one turn, and then I'll just have to convert some of them, except for the port. I thought it was actually gonna cost me more money to do it, but it didn't, so I'm kind of happy about that. And yeah, uh, here I'm just saying that um, I'm gonna have to go with do, do war with the Abdanians probably next turn because. Uh, uh, they're getting some of those settlements that I actually want want to have and it's gonna be a difficult war because I'm the less powerful faction uh, But yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it for this episode um, Hopefully no audio problems in the next one. I'm gonna see what causes this problem. Maybe just restarting my PC will help I didn't do that, but hopefully I'm not gonna have to do like a voiceover of it next time and uh, Yeah, that's gonna be everything for this one and I'll see you next time. Goodbye